How do you make good decals for Roblox? I get asked this question a lot, which is why today I'll be showing you how to create decals from scratch and how to upload them for Theme Park Tycoon 2 and other Roblox games. And the best thing, it's completely free. So let's get started. So first, before I actually show you how to make images in Photoshop and Paint.net, I'm actually going to show you how to just upload images straight to the Roblox platform. So of course, first, we're actually just going to find something we like here. Let's just type in like brick texture or something. And wow, look at that, guys. I really like this brick texture. Mmm, beautiful. So I'm just going to download that. And there we go. That's downloaded. So now let's just head over to the Roblox website. So let's sign up right here. We shall call ourselves, hmm, Cozy's Biggest fan. There we go. Okay. And with a super secure password set, let's go. Surprise no one's taking the username Cozy's Biggest Fan, to be honest, guys. What are you doing? So let's just head over to our create tab right here. And you'll see it says, welcome back to the creator hub. Now it shows a bunch of stuff right here. We don't need to worry about any of this. All we need to do is click our dashboard button right here. And from this page, you can see we've got all our experiences, loads of stuff right here. But all we need to worry about is the development items tab. Now that's because in here, you can see we've got the decals button right here. And then from here, we literally just need to click the upload asset button. Once we click that, click upload. We can just go into our downloads, click the image that we want right here. And well, it's literally as easy as that, guys. We can set a name. We can set a description. Let's just call this brick texture. And there you go. You've uploaded an image to Roblox. It's actually pretty easy. But now, how do you get this into Theme Park Tycoon 2? Well, let me show you. So let's head over to Theme Park Tycoon 2, our incredible new account. Okay, so now we're in game right here. We need to, first of all, ask the very important question. Seeing as we're in a public server. Does anyone here know Cozy? There we go. Good stuff. All right. Now we've done that. <laughs> Let's actually place down an image panel. Here we go. Let's chuck that down there. And then if we just head back to Roblox right here, go back to our creator dashboard, we can just click on this. And up in the URL right here, you can see that there's this code right like that. Now, all we need to do right here is Control C or right click and copy. Go back to Theme Park Tagging 2, click our image panel, click change. And then where it says add by ID right here, we just need to click right here and do Control V. Now, if you can't copy and paste, of course, all you need to just do is copy this number right here into the game. And then we just click enter. And as you can see, it shows up just like that. And well, Look at that. It's in the game. <laughs> and now we can chuck our brick texture everywhere. Look at that. Didn't even realize it was seamless, but it turns out it is. Mm, beautiful, beautiful. And yeah, it's literally as easy as that to import images from Google Images, Bing Images, whatever you're using into Roblox. So now it's actually time to show you guys how to make your very own decals and then import them into Roblox. So first, we're actually going to start off here in Paint.net. I will also be showing you how to do this in Photoshop as well, but Paint.net is a free software. If you can't afford Photoshop or don't have it, then Paint.net is a good sort of, you know, compromise that you can use instead, seeing as it's a free program. So when we actually load up Paint.net, you'll see we have a canvas right here in the center. Now we can make this canvas bigger or smaller by going into image and we can change the canvas size, which means the actual canvas will get bigger. There will be more space. Or if you want to just change what's actually on it, you can resize. So just to give a bit of an example, if I do this scribble right here, I can make the canvas size bigger. So I can make this 2000 by 2000 pixels. And that will just make the actual canvas bigger so that the thing in the middle still stays the same. Or you can actually go into resize right here and we can just change this to 2000 by, let's just put it to 1000 right here. And you can see the actual image is stretched to that size. So basically the reason I'm telling you this is because the first thing we need to do is actually set our canvas size. So let's just go into image, canvas size. Now, if you want it to be a square, it needs to be the exact same for the width to the height. If you want it to be like a long rectangle, then you need the width to be twice the height. Or you can do whatever size or shape you want. Of course, that's completely up to you. And another good thing to point out as well is you can click this button right here, maintain aspect ratio. And now if we just up this to 8,000, you can see that the height also changes to 6,000. Or if I change this to 4,000, you can see this changes to 3,000. So for me, I'm just going to set this to a 1,000 by 1,000 pixel thing right here. And now this isn't a complete tutorial on how to use paint.net. There is a lot of stuff that we're not going to go through right here just for ease and obviously so this video isn't forever long. But you can see we've got our toolbar right here, our layers right here, our history right here. And we can also open our colors from this button right here. If you want to open or close any of these tabs, you just click these buttons here. And you can also click the more button on the colors tab to open up more stuff like this. You've got all your tools right here that you can switch between your brush, your pencil, your eyedropper, your stamp tool, your text tool, your shape tool, everything you need here. Honestly, I recommend just playing around and just working out what each tool means by yourself. But what I am going to show you right here is we're just going to click this magic one tool like this. We're going to click on our canvas. You can see that selects everything right here. You can also use the box select tool instead and just select that like so. And then if we just click the delete key right here, you can see that's gotten rid of the Y. And we've now gotten this checkerboard pattern right here that you can see when I zoom in or out or move around, it still stays the same. Now that's because the checkerboard pattern right here basically means that this canvas is now transparent. So if you actually import any images like, for example, this scribble into Fiendbox Titan 2, it'll actually be transparent and it won't have a white background or just a background in general. And now one last thing I want to show you guys right here is that in the actual paintbrush tool right here, we can actually change the hardness so that just determines how soft the brush is. 
you can see our max hardness right here, it just completely fills it in with no softness on the edges right here. But then if we bring our hardness down all the way to zero, we can just go like this and it's nice and soft now. We can also change our brush size right here and go up and down in the brush size and make this bigger or smaller. And we can also undo and redo with these buttons like this. So now that's pretty much all of the basics down. If you do want any more information, of course, go watch an actual paint.net tutorial. This isn't a tutorial completely. This is just to kind of give you a general idea. But literally all I'm going to show you guys what to do right here is just write some text in and how to import that into Theme Park Tycoon 2 just to make this nice and easy. So all we're going to do right here is just come over to our text tool. We're going to click anywhere on the canvas, which will make this little, well, flashing line here. And then we can come up to here. We can change our size to whatever we want. We'll just go for 108 right now. And then if we just type something like welcome like this, then you can see we've gotten that text. Now we can change the font right here by clicking on this button like so. And you can change this to whatever you want. Now you won't have as many fonts as I do right here because, well, I've got a lot of custom fonts. You can download custom fonts online, but that's a topic for another video. But let's just choose a font that we quite like here. I'm just going to go with Palma Lake right here because it just is quite a nice font to be fair. <laughs> Let's just make that a bit bigger to actually fit the size of this. And once we've got that in, if you want to make another text line, which is what we're going to do right here, just click anywhere far away from this one. Because if you see, we just click right here, it just goes between it. But if you click down there, it will start a brand new one. Now, I'm going to use a different font for the text underneath right here, which is this other Palmer Lake font. And we're just going to write, welcome to my park. Wow. Let's just make that a bit smaller so it actually fits the same width as this. And you know what? We're going to change the color of this one. And all we need to do to do that is come over to our colors tab and change this to whatever we want. You can choose from one of these right here, or you can actually change it yourself. So if we want to make this blue a little bit lighter, we can do so like this. You can even move around on this to change the color to whatever you want. So let's just go for a blue color, something like this. Doesn't really matter that much. And I also want to change the welcome text to white right here, which we can't actually do because we've already put the text in right here. But what we can just do is just select this with our box select tool right here. Go onto our paint bucket, choose our color, which is going to be white. Let's just change this to global. And then if we click right here, you can see that everything in this selection actually turns white. Okay, there we go. This is now all in. Although, of course, it's not actually in the center right now. So let's quickly do that. I'm just going to select the entire thing right here and we're just going to move it down to where it looks like it's in the center. There we go. That does look about the center. And I will also just point out that if you do want to add any extra layers right here, you just click the add new layer button and then we can do stuff basically underneath this. Now, the best way to think of layers right here is basically just pieces of paper on top of each other, except from those pieces of paper are transparent. <laughs> and what layers pretty much do right here is just keep things on separate different layers on top of each other. So you can see I can move around this layer without affecting the one on top. I can also delete this layer without doing anything on top and it basically just keeps things separate. So if you want to go back and change things, things you very easily can. But anyway, now this is looking pretty decent right here. I'm not going to do anything more, although of course you can do whatever you want, guys. You don't have to do the exact same thing that I'm doing right here. But now we've got our beautiful bit of text right here finished. Let's actually save the file. So firstly, go up to file in the top left, click save as, and then right here, you can save it as whatever you want. If you want it to be transparent, make sure you're saving it as a PNG. And we're just going to save this as welcome to my park. And I'm just going to put paint.net in brackets. So we know this one was made in paint.net. And there we go. You've got a bunch of settings right here, but let's just click okay for now. And that is is now saved. And now if we actually want to import this into Roblox, we do a very similar thing to what we did with our image from Google. We go into decals, we click upload asset, we click upload, and then let's just click our image right here. And there we go. I'm going to click the upload button quickly. And now let's once again load into Theme Park Tycoon 2. And once we're actually back in the game right here, we can go into others, image panel, and let's just place one of these down. Click on the image panel, click change, add by ID, go back to Roblox. Let's just copy and paste this right here. And bada bing, bada boom, and put that in there. And there we go. And you can see we've now got this in. And of course, this is transparent, which means we can change the color of this to whatever we want, or we can even enable transparency and you can see it's now transparent. And it's literally as simple as that, guys. So that's how to create images and import them into Fiendbox Titan 2 from paint.net. Now let's show you how to do that in Photoshop. So we've got Photoshop loaded up right here, guys. Let's just create a new file by clicking the new file button here. And from here, we can change this to whatever size we want. Now I've already gone through this in the paint.net section a little bit, but I will just go through it again for people who have skipped to the Photoshop part. We can change our width and height of our cameras to whatever we want. If we want it to be a square, we want the width and height to be the exact same. But if we want it to be a rectangle, we want the width to be twice as much as the height. So for example, 1000 by 500. And of course, we can change it to whatever size we want. It doesn't really matter. Do whatever you want. And we can actually just make this transparent by just clicking on background content and transparent. Or of course, you can change it to whatever color you want. Okay, so we're going to do a 1000 by 1000 canvas like this, just like we did from paid.net. We're going to make sure our background's transparent and we're going to click create. And there we go. We've now got another canvas. You can see this is also checkerboarded, just like paint.net, which means that it's transparent. And anything we do on this canvas will be 
transparent. Now, Photoshop is similar to Paint.net in a way, actually. If you've used Paint.net, Photoshop is very similar. It's just a little bit more complicated in places and things are a bit more hidden, but it's very easy once you get used to it. So you can see all of our tools are on the left right here. We have our color tab like this. You can change your color to whatever you want. And you can also open more settings by double clicking on this, which gives you all the same settings that we had in Paint.net. We have our layers tab right here, so we can add layers on top of each other again. And then, of course, this is our canvas. Now, if we want to resize, we can do so by going into the image tab and under image size or canvas size. Now, I've already gone through this in Paint.net, but canvas size basically just makes the actual size of the canvas bigger around what's currently on the of canvas, whilst image size actually stretches whatever is on the canvas to whatever image size you choose. Okay, and now that's all down. Let's actually start working on some stuff. So we're going to make the exact same thing we made in paint.net, but just in Photoshop, just so you guys can compare and see. So let's just go into our text tool right here. You can see this is just the text tool and we just want to click on it. Click anywhere on our canvas and you'll see this will make a new text thing. Text thing, that, that's the official term for it, I swear guys. And we can just make this as big or as small as we want by just changing this right here or by clicking on this tab and choosing one of these. We're going to make our font the exact same as the one we did before. Let's just choose this font right here to start off with. We're just going to write welcome, just as we've already done before. Just going to make that actually just a little bit bigger right here until it just fits. And there we go. Now, one great thing about Photoshop compared to Paint.net is that we can actually just adjust the text whenever we want. By literally just double clicking on this layer right here, you can see it automatically puts us back into it, which means we can literally just click this button right here to change the color. Although if you do want to use the paint bucket, guys, just go over here and just click paint bucket tool. And also another great thing right here is that if we actually want to center this, you can see that when it's centered, a pink line will appear like this. So we can just place this in the center and for some reason it's what the fuck is it doing? But then of course, if we want to add even more text, we just go back into our text tool, click anywhere on the canvas. Let's just choose our font right here. And then we're just going to change this to say to my park once again. We're just going to try and find the right size for this like so. And then we can just move this up like this. While we're actually in the text edit tool, you can just literally go close to it and drag wherever you want and it'll move it. And then of course, let's change our color to a similar one we did in paint.net. It doesn't need to be the exact same color, but we're just going to get something similar, of course. And then if we click the tick button right here and in our move tool, we can just move this again into the center when we find that pink line. And now you can see that once again, this isn't actually in the center when it comes to the actual height. So all we need to do right here is make sure our top one is selected, hold shift, click welcome or whatever you've called it, of course, <laughs> go into our move tool. And then we can just move both of these right here, seeing as they're now both selected until we find that center line like that. There we go. It's now in the center and it's time to actually save. Just before we do though, I do want to point out again, if you do want to actually add extra layers, you just click this button down here to add another layer. We can drag this above or below the other layers. And then once again, we can just go into our paintbrush tool. You know, you can change all the stuff right here once again again with the actual hardness and the size and we can do anything on this layer without actually affecting the other ones and as you can see we can actually just drag this around delete it we can do whatever we want and it doesn't affect the other layers but once again i do just want to point out that if you do want to learn photoshop make sure you actually go watch a proper tutorial because this isn't a proper tutorial it's not going to show you everything although if you do want a bit more of an in-depth tutorial on how to use photoshop guys let me know and i might actually make a video because me and myself i'm actually a graphic designer and photographer and i know a lot of how to use photoshop so i'm happy to make a tutorial if you guys want but anyway for now let's actually just get this saved. To do so, we're just going to go into file, save as. It's going to ask us this dumbass annoying question. Do you want to save to the creative cloud? No, Photoshop, I don't. So let's just click on your computer. And then right here, if you do actually want to save this as a Photoshop file, which means you can reopen it and adjust any layers and it will stay exactly like this. Then you can save it as a Photoshop file. But we're just going to save this as an actual PNG right here, just like we did in paint.net. So let's click save a copy. And then we can change right here to PNG again. And then let's just do this like so. I recommend just going to the smallest file size. So obviously the file is as small as possible. Let's click OK and wait a minute then. And once that is saved, we just need to do the exact same thing we did with paint.net. Let's just go back to Roblox, go onto our creations tab right here, click development items, go into our decals tab, click upload asset, click upload again, and then we're just going to open the one from Photoshop like that. Let's click upload, click on this right here, let's just copy this code once again, and then once we go back into Themebox Icon 2, let's place down another image panel, and then click on our image panel, click change, click add by ID, copy that into there, click that right here, and bada bing bada boom, it's right there. Once again, we can change the background to whatever color we want, and of course, we can also enable transparency. And there you go, guys, it's now in the game game once again. And it's literally as simple as that. You can do whatever you want. Of course, in this tutorial, I've only shown you how to make a very simple bit of text and stuff like that, but you can do stuff that is way more advanced. And now you've got the basics of Photoshop or Paint.net. You know, you can actually go watch a proper tutorial where I show you how to use them more. And if you actually want to explore it a bit more, you can make some even better stuff that's more than just some text. I want to thank all my amazing YouTube members, including the highest tier members, Infinite and Trey Tway Trey. Thank you so much for supporting me, guys. I hope you have found this video very helpful. If you have, please do make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in another video.